Hello, and now we're going to do our next lesson, which is the characteristics of stars, to look at how stars are classified and how we determine which stars to compare and compare, contrast the characteristics of what they have. So first of all, stars are made up of chemicals, and generally stars, uh, this is the pattern, about 73% hydrogen, 25% helium, 2% other elements by its mass. Okay, how can we tell what the star is made up of? Well, we use this instrument, astronomers do, called a spectroscope. And it graphs by using the rainbow pattern to determine the elements found in a particular star. We were using those in class. And then it shows that rainbow pattern by breaking the light into colors and producing an image of a resulting spectrum. Every element um, has its own unique fingerprint pattern. So sometimes there's more red, yellow, orange, blue, green, purple. Depending on the pattern, there could be a certain amounts of it. And that's unique to that type of element. Okay, another characteristic of a star is how bright it is. Brightness of a star depends upon two things, the size and the temperature. The larger the star, the more bright. And the hotter the star, the more bright it is. Okay, and when we talk about temperature, it'll be easier when we graph it, the last thing, to show that comparison. Here's another fact. Because uh, they are so far away, all stars look about the same size, but they are not. Okay, so they all appear to us without a telescope as white little specks of light. But when we get up close, there actually is more to tell about the star. An astronomer can classify stars according to color, temperature, size, composition, and brightness. Here are each one of those broken down for you. For the color, color reveals its surface temperature. Here are two just to compare. Blue stars are the hottest, so if we heat up something hot, super hot, it's going to be a blue color. And when we see blue stars, those are the hottest stars. Red stars are coolest, and when we have like a candlelight or a campfire, we can see the difference of the color. Sometimes if you look up close enough, you can see um, red, and that's actually a cool hot color. Another characteristic that was on the list was size. There are different sized stars. They can come as giant, super giant, and those are very much larger than our sun, just to compare. Two, most stars are smaller than our sun. Three, white dwarfs are about the same size of Earth. And four, tiny neutron stars are only um, about 20 kilometers in diameter. If we were actually bring it here and land a, a neutron star in uh, Melrose, it would spin out of control. These stars are very tiny but very packed full of, of energy. Okay, there's two and I'm going to bring them out at the same time. There's these two definitions we need to make sure we know just to compare them. First of all, they have to do with brightness. Okay, so that's in the term. What's the difference between the brightness? The, let me put this like this. In, the apparent brightness is what we see from Earth, how it looks to us. So the stars might appear smaller and dim. But that's how, because of our perspective from Earth, it's apparent brightness, how it appears. The absolute brightness is the brightness a star would have if it were um, at a standard distance from Earth. So if we, if we were to compare or line up all the stars next to each other and see how big, small, or how hot, or cooler they are, then we can actually compare how actually bright they are, or the absolute brightness. And that's the difference. How it seems to be or how it's seen from Earth, this one is absolute or at the actual brightness that it is. Okay, and that's a good because we need to compare what we're looking at. Okay, and the last thing is, like I was telling you, was the important thing about comparing temperature. The hertz von russell diagram, this is the graph that shows the star's surface temperature versus their absolute brightness. Now, it is not a graph that shows where they are positioned in the night sky. It's a graph to compare brightness, that's what it says here on the y-axis, 
to surface temperature. Now I'll give you this graph in class, so don't worry about that. But um, you won't have the color, so we want to make sure we'll do that as well to make sure we have it separated because color tells us what temperature the star is. And this is surface temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay, so we can have here in the top corner our blue stars that have a high brightness are up in this corner. And that tends to be our super giants, our giant stars, because they're big and they're hot. Down here in this corner are the red dwarfs, and they are a cooler red color, and they're small, so they have a low brightness. And this midsection here, this is a, like a slope line, and this slope line has a name. It's called the main sequence, where most of the stars, 90% of the stars that have been graphed on here, are alive, and they are uh, most of the stars that fall, most stars fall along this line, and you have the ones that are outside that are about the end of its life cycle. Okay, so I hope you did well on that and you answered all the questions. Thank you so much for your time.